Welcome to the dark forest. Jackie and her pals will never bore us. Shameless confessions about our obsession will make us laugh and smile. So let's explore the dark forest and dark down for a Welcome to the Dork Forest. I'm Jackie Cation. I'm your host. You know the websites, JackieCation.com, DorkForest.com, TheDorkForest.com, and FamilyPetAncestry.com. They all lead to a variety of places where you can listen to the Dork Forest. Uh, I'm Jackie Cation. I'm your host. It is November or December. In November and December, I ask that you do not donate to the Dork Forest. You instead find a local food bank and give them the, either the 10 to to $100 that you were going to give the Dork Forest, because I know you were because I have a PayPal button that you can start donating to again in January. But to find a local food bank in your neighborhood, you can go to feedingamerica.org and you can put in your zip code. If you do not live in the United States, you can put in the name of your town and the word food bank and it will come up. You can do that here in the United States as well, oddly enough. Uh, the internet works like that everywhere, it turns out. So do that. Don't donate to the Dork Forest. If you want to support the Dork Forest still in these months, there are ways. You can get stuff for people for the holidays as trinkets, as gifts. You can get T-shirts and CDs and merch over at JackieCation.com at, on the store. There's going to be a new stand-up shirt. Uh, coming out. And that actually will not benefit me. That'll be a benefit for different charities, I think is what that's going to be. All of it's available digitally, you know, iTunes and Amazon and Comedy Film Nerds has my DVD as a downloadable video, comedyfilmnerds.com. But if you want hard copies of the DVD of the CDs, you can get them at JackieCation.com. I also have a stand-up comedy t-shirt, my spooky reading girl t-shirts. I have Dork Forest t-shirts and Ranger of the Dork Forest t-shirts. I have hoodies in stock. It is winter. And so if you want a hooded sweatshirt, zip hoodie, I actually have all the sizes in stock. You can email me, Jackie at JackieCation.com to make sure that they are still in stock at any time, of course. Uh, and I will tell you if they are, and if they aren't, it would be back order and it might be a while. So know in your heart. Other than that, another way to support the show, if you, uh, because you're not donating in November and December, is to continue to use the Amazon banner on JackieCation.com and DorkForest.com. There is a link uh, to support the show, and all it is is it's a link through to Amazon. And you order normally, like you would from Amazon. The Dork Forest just gets a little bit of a kickback for your order. It doesn't cost you extra at all. You can... Uh, see my calendar, where I'm doing stand-up comedy. You can always follow me on Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook. The Facebook page is Jackie Cation hyphen Joke Smith. That's my fan page. If you have listened to all 600 and whatever episodes of the Dork Forest and would like more Dork Forest, there are premium episodes, probably a dozen of them. And they are, in the last couple of years, if I do a live episode, it usually costs me some money. So I have been putting them up on Bandcamp and they cost money. They cost two bucks a pop. But if you go to the dorkforest.bandcamp.com, you can see those different shows. They're usually live episodes around the world. And there is also a, a four four stories on a on a sort of a handmade storytelling album that I made over there too and those are just a buck each. So if you want to go to Bandcamp, you can do that as well. Oh, why don't I do the the credits? The Dork Forest is not made possible just by me, Jackie Cation. Patrick Brady's going to fix this audio by God, and it's going to be great. And Mike Rickberg sang that song you just heard. He composed and sang it with his wife, Sarah Cohen. He will sing his words to the Mexican hat dance at the end of the program. And Vilmos fixes JackieCation.com. He, uh, he does the website. Go to allthingscomedy.com and find other podcasts there. I also have another podcast called The Jackie and Lori Show with Lori Kilmartin on the Nerdist Network. Uh, dorks, nerds, we're all in this together. The Jackie and Lori Show is literally Lori Kilmartin and I discussing and just essentially just going off about stand-up comedy. So if you like stand-up comedy, you might like the Jackie and Laurie show over on Nerdist. Anyway, let's get into this show because it's awesome. Hey, it's Jackie Cation. I'm in my living room. Ryan Connor, welcome. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> it uh, it should be a good time. Uh, this is the Dork Forest, of course. We it, met 
We've met a couple. We've done a couple. Yeah, of we've done shows. several shows together. Yeah. We never hung out, but we've done several shows together. Right. So Exchanged this is pleasantries. It. You're in Van Nuys now. I know. I'm. I'm here. The good times. <laughs> yeah. The good times. It is Van Nuys. So uh, it's RC Comedy on Twitter. It is because Ryan Connor is hardcore porn. It is hardcore. So <laughs> avoid RyanConnor.com, <laughs> and so go to Ryan Connor Comedy. Dot com or at RC Comedy for sort of LA sets. When this comes out, it'll be LA sets. Yeah. And RC Comedy, Connor, uh, Ryan Connor Comedy dot com probably has uh, some sort of extended calendar. Yeah. Extended calendar there. And you can actually link to all social media stuff there too. So you don't even need to remember anything. Anything. Ryan Connor yeah. Comedy. That's all you got to yeah. remember. It's going to be fine. Uh, okay. So I always ask, what do you want to talk about? And you said, and it's. This is going to come out a little bit after Halloween, but it's amazing because you, you enjoy a band. So let the games begin, drinking game people. The Who Smashing knows? Pumpkins. I don't know anything about music. Uh, I looked them up. They started in 88. Mm-hmm. It was a particularly uh, a dry decade for me. Like I didn't, uh, there was no grunge in my life and there was no, in 1989, I, and ni- to 89 to 91, I was into hip hop briefly. Mm-hmm. And then I, uh, I went back to listening to Billy Joel or whatever the hell I listened to. Anyway, mm-hmm. so Smashing Pumpkins, 88 to like 96, right? Nope. 88 to, right. well, well, the first member left in 96. Okay. It, it's really, the Smashing Pumpkins are really just Billy Corgan. Okay. Um, and then Jimmy Chamberlain, the drummer. Yeah. Uh, he's been there for most of it. Okay. But um, he he had a drug issue where he was gone for a while, and then it was a family thing where he took another three years off. Um, everyone else has been a rotating cast. Um, okay. Okay. So those two guys are the kind of the, the main... Yeah. Billy Corgan and what's the other guy's name? Jimmy Chamberlain. He, he's still. Uh, yeah, he's back. Now. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, Billy has written everything that's ever been in a Smashing Pumpkins album except for like four songs that he co-wrote. Okay. Um, he's also recorded every single part except for on other than the drums, except for on three albums where he let other people do like a part or two here and there. But like the, the first two albums, uh, which really just put them on the map yeah. uh, for the, the like amazing musicianship. Right. He recorded every single part because the, the, the producer, like, I mean, he, he's a perfectionist too, which is why a lot of the band members don't like him. Okay. Um, yeah, he, I mean, he's a tyrant. Right. Right. He's a complete his, tyrant. Right. But, so it's his band. Mm-hmm. And so people come and go. Yeah, exactly. But I feel like I, I like that. I mean, in creativity, you should be a tyrant if well, it's your vision. Well, and, and if you don't want to work with them, mm-hmm. turns out don't work with them. Yeah. That's it's, it. uh, yeah. It'll be fine. It, have you ever heard of a band? This is, uh, I'm sure you have, Badly Drawn Boy? Yeah, yeah. Okay, because that guy plays all the instruments, too. Yeah. Uh, I have one of his albums. There okay. you go. Anyway, so, uh, <laughs> but I think it's from like 92 <laughs> or yeah. 2002. One yeah. of those decades. Anyway, go. Uh, well, okay, so so 88. Yeah, really to to two thousand is what people still call the original incantation, Team. even okay. though they're really it fluctuated from ninety six to two thousand. Okay, and then uh, he, he did a, a a side project um, that he ended up blowing up because the other band members didn't like that some of the songs sounded like the Smashing Pumpkins. He's like, well, that's just those are. I mean, that's, that's how the, I write. That's what I write. Yeah, and then uh, and then it turns out two of them were. Addicted to heroin, so they he got rid of that. Then okay, did, then that was a, different from the drug guy. Uh, different, different drug guys. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. But but the but the drummer came with him to that too. So he's like, if he and I are writing all the songs, of course it's going to sound kind of like the Pumpkins. Right, right. And there's going to be heroin. Yeah. And, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Billy Corgan, not a heroin addict. No, to no, our knowledge. No. Okay. He's he's not. He's on Adderall. Uh, he's, he's on something else. <laughs> he did. He now he's on like tea and like raw vegetables. It's kind of weird. Um. But uh, the his first album apparently he wrote the entire album on acid. Oh, okay. Wrote and performed. You know what? You sent me eight songs, which is that is the way to go. Mm-hmm. If you if you wish to introduce me to a band, you have to send me eight songs. Murray Valeriano, love him dearly, uh-huh. sent me a a, a stick with. Um, 102 U2 songs on it. <laughs> Guess what I did? I wiped that stick and I said, thank you for that USB stick. And, uh, and then you know what you did? You said, from now on, I'm going to ask people for eight songs. That's exactly let, what, what had happened. Let no. me show you how long... I want you to see how so much I labored over this. 
Yeah, I, th- well, I, yeah, I started you with said, hundreds, right. and then I got it down to this. Yeah. And then I consulted with my wife <laughs> and a couple other people. Yeah, my friend Quincy in New you York. You went to the hive mind. Yeah. You're like, okay, yeah. I, just, I can only pick eight. Yeah. And then you wrote a small paragraph. I meant to print it, the paragraph about every song yeah. you picked, which I, we might, I, might have to go to. I was strategizing with it. I, was, I called my friend Quincy. He lives in New York. <laughs> it was like late at night. And, yeah. and I'm like, Quincy, I'm sorry. I know it's tired. You can go in your other room or something. I got to talk to you for a minute. And right? <laughs> what, what do you think of bet- between this song and that one? He's like, oh, you know what? Let me think. And, like, <laughs> he, he was on board with me. Yeah, that's. Uh, I just did a Battleship Pretensions podcast last night, which mm-hmm. is a, a movie podcast. Okay. And um, I was telling the guy... David Bax, I believe is his name is, is the one of the one of the co hosts. And I said, Yeah, tomorrow I'm doing a Dork Forest with um Smashing Pumpkins, uh guys who and he says, This he's doing the Smashing Pumpkins? I would have done the Smashing Pumpkins. and I was like, <laughs> I think you're of an age. I think there's a window yeah. <laughs> where you're yeah. like Um so uh yeah, he was because for I could only listen to one of them though. You'll be sad to know. Really? Because the rest of them were MP4s <gasps> and I would have had to put them into Audacity and and massage them and then bring it out. Right. And so I, I only listened to one MP3 and I can't remember which song it was, but it seemed to be a lot of feelings going on. Yeah, I would Does, say Is I, he full of feelings? In 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 uh yeah, some songs. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if you were 14 yeah. when you started yeah. listening to this, yeah. it would have blown my mind. Yeah. It it, it the songs are mixed. The, the lyrics are more thought, thoughty than feely like now. Like philosophical. Yeah, I'd okay. say so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but but some are more feely. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I tried to send you kind they of. Seemed the ragey. Hits. I, they seem ragey. They seem like the, yeah. I I noticed some of the uh, yeah. the commentary was like no. I I kind of had to send you this. Yeah, and yeah. I yeah. was reading him off to the to the guy David, and he goes. Oh, he sent you that one, did he? Yeah. And I and then I read what he said. That's it exactly. Kind of he he knows you don't know anything. So yeah. cuz that it's a hit. He maybe thinks that you think you would know it. And I said, that's exactly what he wrote. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's exactly what. But that was what one was. of the ones I couldn't listen. To. I think of the 8, I only sent two that I really loved. One love. was a B-side that wasn't even on an album. I don't remember which B-side I sent you. It was um, um was yeah, take a yeah, gander. Let, let's take a gander here. What the heck? And while, while I'm looking it up, I will mention because because I stopped saying it was uh, that um, the um, he's been doing albums under the Pumpkins again since 2007. So okay, so, so he's back. Yeah, yeah, and he so also just put out a solo years. album last week. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, Starla. Yeah. Starla. D- d- did you hear that? No, no. Oh, I that's could not that's hear not that one that you heard. Oh yeah, Starla is. Well, let's go through the list. Let's let's do um and and then what, at the end hits. of it. Well, and then at the end of it, yeah. we'll go through some of your favorite. Uh, the, okay, <laughs> the favorite yeah. ones that may, I can find on YouTube. Yeah. Two, uh, two of these will make. Okay, so so I sent you tonight, 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 which tonight. is the biggest hit. Uh, I mean, I think um, as far as just songwriting goes, is is incredible. What's it about? I mean, it, this is guitar rock, right? It's sort of there's guitars and but drums he, and yeah, for the like most it's part, not acoustic. It's no, but not... he, he but he's all over the place. I mean, his new album's all just piano and acoustic. Okay, so um, but, but but tonight tonight any, okay. is from an album uh, called Melancholy, where it's, I mean, it's crazy. He came off of like. So two albums prior was just nothing but crazy psychedelia. Okay. The next album was like, I mean, it's hard to even describe. It's a mix of psychedelia, some acoustic. Um, I mean, one song is just like a, a I mean, it sounds like a dulcimer. Okay. And like it, so it's kind of all over the place. But then this album is like so the, the third the fir- album. The, yeah, M- melancholy. It, it like the 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 first track is just piano and an orchestra. Okay. And then tonight, and no lyrics. No. And okay. then t- tonight, tonight's the next track where it's the full band and an orchestra. Okay. And and then it goes into the next track that. Uh, uh, called Jelly Belly. That's just this crazy, like dark, loud. Um, I mean, it almost sounds like no, heavy you, metal. You, you, or... wouldn't, you wouldn't call. I wouldn't because it's so melodic. Okay. You, you, I wouldn't call it. It's so melodic and so layered. Okay. There, there, there's just. I mean, there's probably thirty guitar parts on this one part of the song. Okay. Yeah. 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 And and then he goes from that to the song Zero, which is. Um, a single that's much more simple, but it's okay. like really intense. Um, and was that one that 
I mean, you know how like they say with musicians, <clears throat> I know in comedy, uh, mm-hmm. one imagines you would listen to the whole album. You can listen yes. to tracks, but it's especially with a storytelling comic, you're mm-hmm. going to want to listen to the whole album. So is yeah. are, is he doing storytelling telling albums? Does one yes. song kind of lead to the next song? Uh, or it, at or least, it makes at sense? least um, in mood, it does. Okay, um, so and, he's constructing something, a bigger picture. It, it, in, in pretty much everything. Um, yeah, then he has it, it, the album Adore. It okay. is amazing. That one is it, it's a lot of acoustic. Um um it, is that one was that the fourth one or is that newest? That's uh that yeah. would be number 4. This isn't counting box sets right. and B-side albums. Okay. So Yeah, yeah. So uh yeah, a, a door is um he did it in response to his mother's death. Death and it, okay. a, and um a, every song is about um well, actually, not every song, but a lot of the songs are about mourning his mother's death, right? And things that other thoughts that that led him to. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's it's absolutely amazing. Then the next album uh, was uh, a complete concept album again, um, where he knew the band was as it was was going to break up. Okay, and so the album is about the formation and demise of the band. And then he also put out an additional free box set online right. that completed the picture. Oh wow! Okay, what happened to the to the rest of the band members? Like, are they studio musicians now? Do you have any idea what happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they're actually going to do a tour with them all regroup next year. Okay, which so I'm less excited about because I like the new the new members band. better, okay. and I'm also. Uh, friends of a friend with one of them, so I get to go backstage at all the shows now. Oh my god! And that's going to end, so that's not fun. <laughs> yeah, that is that is uh, that is unfortunate. So you've met Billy Corgan? Then. Uh, I, I but I haven't met him backstage. I've met him at other things though. Like I've I, I've been like lucky enough that I've been Hollywood able to go to these tiny shows. Okay. Yeah. Um. Oh, and, like small band venues. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um. Um. But everyone else is there. He doesn't go to like the meet and greet stuff because it's just full of women trying to go home with him. Sure, and he's sick Poor of it, thing. I guess. Yeah, uh, but is he married? Uh, I don't think he's married, but he has a partner and a kid. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's in a committed monogamous relationship. Yeah, and He'd he's like also to... been a rock star for twenty seven years. He doesn't right. He's well, now, he's sick of it. I think. Now I was um I was talking to somebody. I did. The tiniest amount of research. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes with bands, I genuinely, it's a bit of a caricature how little I know. Yeah. So I read the first, and when I say a a tiny amount of research, Uh I read the first paragraph of Wikipedia. Uh Uh, And (laughs) they said it was a mixture of, of, um, that's why I said the word heavy metal. Mm -hmm. Because they said it was a mixture of prog rock, progressive rock, Mm -hmm. uh, psychedelic, and, um, and heavy metal. And um, so that was where that came from. Yeah. Somebody else said that um, that some people don't like the Smashing Pumpkins because it came and they and they tend because it came out the same time as grunge, and grunge was a lot about the indie labels and stuff. Mm-hmm. And Billy Cor- Corgan, Corgan, right, mm-hmm. uh, was never never hid the fact that he he didn't want he wanted to be a rock star. Yeah. Is that yeah yeah absolutely. So that was he was like no that's why you play the guitar you yeah, want to be yeah, a rock star I mean, yeah yeah he, he kind of came, like their first single was on um uh caroline's records actually their first album was initially and then virgin said how about us and they were like well yeah that's bigger of course like yeah <laughs> what, what why are we pretending here right right yeah if, that's kind of a, it, the, the, his take and it, yeah i mean yeah fair enough yeah. it's um yeah it's it's not a hobby yeah so um <laughs> it's it, it kind of makes sense that he would be like no, no, I want to be as successful as the, at this as I can be. Yeah. And you guys have a giant bag of money to throw at this. Yeah. So uh, so I guess they got some guff for it, but um, but the fans seem to be, like yourself, mm-hmm. uh, seem to be like hardcore, like, oh, this yeah. is mind-blowing, this is, it's important. Like, what Like what are his, like, what are the topics? You t- say it's philosophical. Is it? Well, life, well, the universe, and everything. What's my Douglas Adams link here? Hook man, me up. Be, uh, because it, song it, it can shift from song to song. Sure. I, I mean, and especially you know, in the last like fifteen years, there's you yeah. know been songs about the, so. the state of the world, right? And uh, um, so he does some socio political stuff, or 
Yeah, but but it's not overt. No, or or specific, right? Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. sociopolitical, and then there's political. Yeah, just just yeah. Give, just to give you an example, like like there's a song called "God and Country," yeah. but it's like tongue in cheek, like like okay. are, are these things really that fucking important to you? <laughs> You're right. You know? Yeah. yeah. Um, um, I mean, that's not like one of their better songs, but that that's just one that came to mind. Sure. Um, uh, I don't know. I mean, a a, a lot of it is um. I mean, uh, like the one about his your... mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, does it does it reminisce? Does he do storytelling like about his childhood in it? Or it, in uh, in plenty of songs? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that there's like callbacks to like how he grew up or things. Well, that no, no, not not in that album. It's 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 more about the the. I I would say like the cycles of, of mourning, like like the 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 feeling of of this person being taken from you, and then and then also that leads into other feelings of like losing another loved one that's not just not just your mother but like a romantic love interest and, oh, okay so sort of like breaking up or like all death no not all death got it but, breaking just, up. It, but, it, but it's, it's not clear it's just this person's gone right you know. like i i listened like four years ago i think mm-hmm. it was i have one again i have one album of this band mm-hmm. and it is called fun Mm-hmm. With a dot, right? Yep. And uh, uh, so I have one of their albums, and the the lead singer of that, who I don't have no idea what his name is, um, his mother had just died. Mm-hmm. And so there were a couple of songs about how, you know, just sort of like, uh, he's still psyched he has his dad, or he should be. And, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> and you just carry on, and you keep going, and you're like, I don't, it's hard to live with it, but you just gotta, and sort of the stages of grief as well. So it's kind of, mm-hmm. I mean, to blow my mind, because I, I genuinely, I don't listen to that much music. I've been yeah. trying to listen to more music. <laughs> it's so bizarre to hear. You're just, people are like, well, do you like music? And I was like, of course I like music. I listen to music all the yeah. time, but I listen to the same, like I buy an album every mm-hmm. two years. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking of buying Taylor Swift's 1989. That's yeah. what's happening. I'm thinking about it. I haven't <laughs> bu- purchased it. I don't. The R- Ryan Adams covering that album is better. Is it? Yeah, it's his uh, his covers of the album are really good. How do you spell his name? R- just Ryan. Yeah. Adams. Ryan Adams. Yep. Now, see, it's why, a, why yeah. have I never heard of that gentleman? I bet you I don't he's know. famous. He's, he's pretty famous. He's pretty famous. Yeah. Uh, the, I follow DJ Khaled on uh, uh, Khalid <laughs> on uh, on Snapchat, but that's just because uh-huh. uh, he cracks me up because he's constantly showing me the watch he's wearing uh, <laughs> and his tennis shoes. Is that what he does? Yeah. Yeah. He shows his new tennis shoes oh, and man. his watch. He was and, on our show. I, I, I'm like a writer, producer on Ridiculousness. Yeah. And we, we you know... Despite the uh, free flowing nature of the show, right. there's a ton of prep that goes into it, of course, and uh, and a decent amount of writing and um, and research as well. And so when we have a guest on, you know, it, it's really about sculpting the episode around them and figuring out what stories. Like you, you, we we pre-interview like weeks out. We want to hear them tell the story so we can right. figure out how we can. Put turn that into something, and then turn that into something else. Turn that into something else, and how see how it would resonate with Rob and all that stuff. Yeah, and um, with 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 Colin, it, it wasn't my episode; it was one of the other guys. But he uh, he did the research, got on the phone with Colin, and Colin said, "No, well, let's not do this. Let's just uh, let's just do the show, and it's going to be the greatest episode ever." <laughs> And they're, yes. and they're like, well, we, we kind of need to know like what you'd say about this. We need to verify if things are true. And he's like, no, nah, like, let's just get up there and just see what happens. Let's just do it. Worst episode in history. Right. He didn't talk. He didn't. Oh, that's because that's because nobody knew what to ask him. I mean, yeah. I suppose you could ask him about his son. Uh, <laughs> I also got to see the birth of his son on Snapchat. Well, that's, that's... we have not seen his the woman who birthed that child yeah. since. Wow. I've seen the nanny a hundred million times, and we've seen the 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 child growing up from tiny infanthood to now he is a yeah. toddler. Um, well, it's a it's an interesting life, DJ. Yeah, can I call you DJ? Is I think, I, I think D- DJ's his birth name. He, <laughs> I was born into this. <laughs> right, <laughs> I didn't I, have a choice. <laughs> I also heard him one time berating like one of his security dudes or assistants about how he should never take a day off because that's the day that it's all going. I mean, and, and that's a oh. common theory. Yeah, is that the day you take the day you take off is the day you would have broke through, and you're like. 
or the day you would have got a full night's rest. Yeah. Uh, one of those two things. And done even better the next day. Exactly. Or, yeah. and, and granted, I mean, they're both coming from a place where they're not, you know, they weren't, there's there's other social structures going on yeah. where they have to break through to just be normal. Yeah. Yeah, and just be considered regular people. So, um Yeah. They're black, you guys, is what I'm saying. Anyway, so uh but so I get the you have to work three times as hard, mm-hmm. but there's also part of me that's like Oh Jesus, God and country, man! Is it worth it? Is it worth it? <laughs> is it worth it? And uh, is it really worth it? Back to the smashing. Back pumpkin. to it. You're wearing a smashing pumpkins T-shirt. I am. Did you get it at a at a show? Uh, I d- I bought this after the fact. This is a shirt from 1992. Okay. Uh, okay. I really like the back of it. As you know, this was during the when the drug war was a big thing. Oh, the dare. Yeah. So just say maybe. Yeah. Huh? Just say maybe. <laughs> yeah. Sure. And yeah. Drug war's coming back, so it is. That, it is. Uh, so just just say maybe, kids. Just say maybe, and uh, wait till college. Yeah, that's what I say. Um, um, I, if I could uh, touch on something, you you please. mentioned that that their fans are hardcore and loyal. Um, I would agree. So let me give you an example. <laughs> yes, let me please. give you an example. Yes, please. So I became a fan in ninety two. No, ninety three. I'm sorry, ninety three, and then in ninety four. Four or ninety five was when I became a crazy obsessed fan. Like, what? <laughs> because at first I only heard a couple songs. I was right. like, these songs are amazing, yeah. but I didn't know that. You know what I mean? I didn't know there was more to it. Right. You know, I was a huge fan of Nirvana and the Stone Temple Pilots at the right. time. Those were probably my two favorite bands oh, there before. You go. Yeah, and then and then I I heard um, this B side album called Pisces Iscariot, and then I was like, oh my god, this is incredible. Yeah, and then Melancholy came out. And uh, I never saw them in concert until 2000 because I thought you had to be 18 to get into concerts. Oh, my God. Yes. Uh, how old were you in 94? I, I would have been 13. Yeah. Okay. So um, I could have just gone with a, I, I mean, my parents wouldn't have gone to this concert, but I, I, I could have gone with a, like a friend. Let me tell you something. I, you are exactly the age of the guy last night. Yeah, I was like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, <laughs> that you uh, discovering the Smashing Pumpkins yeah. when you're about twelve or thirteen yeah. is the way to go. It's and it, yeah. P- Pisces Iscariot is a great name, though. It is. <laughs> That's a pretty great. Um, what's yeah. it about? Uh, it, it's just a collection of B sides from the first two albums. Oh, okay. From from uh, Gish and Siamese Dream. Okay. Yeah. And so so it it it's its own sort of anthology or collection. Yeah, but it sounds just like an album. Right. So it, it's 13 Yeah, and that's songs what Starler's or... from. Okay. Yeah. Um yeah, so so in You had to be 18 to go to a and your parents would I, have, I thought someone that. would have had to have taken you anyway. Yeah, my, my mom would Where'd be you grow up? Uh, uh DC. Okay. And they they would even when they were huge and doing arenas, they would still do this this 900 seat club in DC every year because mm-hmm. it was their favorite club. They did it every Halloween. Oh wow. And uh I didn't uh I didn't know I was eligible to go. Right. And then in uh 2000, they're breaking I'm mean, I'm a junior in college. Right. And um they announced they're breaking up, and uh, they're doing these farewell concerts. Two yep. shows in Chicago, November 29th, December second. Yep. And uh, um, I, you know, there Where'd was like you go to college, George Mason, okay, DC suburbs, yep. and the uh, they had a local ticket blackout. You you could only buy if you lived in Chicago for the first five minutes. So of okay. course they both sold out in those first five minutes, right? And then eBay went crazy. I put in a I think it was a three thousand dollar bid on eBay what? for one ticket for. The top bowl yeah. at the United Center because the uh, 29th was the United Center, wow. which is like twenty thousand seats, and then the Metro uh, was on December second. That's the first club where they ever performed. I, th- okay. I think it's about an eight hundred seater. Yeah. Um. So, and I knew I wasn't going to get Metro seats because yep. they ended up going for like twenty thousand dollars. Like that was the peak wow. of them, but like five to twenty. Yeah. So I put in this huge bid for eBay, and then eBay shut all the bids down because they said it was getting crazy, and it's you know it there's bit, so many state laws on yeah. on scalping. So a guy wrote to like the hundred and some people who had bid and said, "Tell me why I should sell you the tickets," <gasps> and I told him why he should sell me the tickets. <laughs> And he said, "You get the tickets." Oh, and and I said, "I honestly only need one." And yeah. he said, oh, "Cool, I'll keep the other one." And uh, I said, "How much would you like?" And he said, "Honestly, 
I just need to buy a new hi hat stand. I didn't know it was going to get crazy like this. Right. So he sold me the ticket for like 150 bucks. Oh my god! But then I had to fly to Chicago. I got still a, cost you 800. dollars It ended up yeah. costing me a thousand bucks because yeah. I also got a hotel way too far away, and it was like a sixty dollar <laughs> cab ride because I didn't know the fuck I was Either doing. Either way, yeah. Yeah, and uh, and I almost missed a final exam the next day. Wow. <laughs> But you got to see him, and did you it, see him in the eight hundred venue? Uh, no, it was in the it was in the big it, venue, it was in the big venue, um, and it was. Um, uh, I mean, it was pretty good, tickets, absolutely though? incredible. I mean, no, I, I they were the bull. I was up top. I okay. was up top, but it, it, you know, it was like a. I'm trying to remember, I think it was a three hour and fifteen minute show. I had I have that. I also have the. I shouldn't tell people this because it's illegal, but I have the eight hundred seat thing. I have the actual soundboard audio. It was supposed oh. to be released, and then they had a fight with their. Uh, with this, their uh, this, the, the, the their recording label, okay, and they said that they they've been fighting oh, so to put have it a out. Bootleg, S- sort of. I have I have something from someone who edited the audio. Okay, yeah. Oh, so you didn't do it? No, 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 no. no. no you just you just got it from someone else, yeah. anyway. I guess as I long would... as I don't share it with someone, I'm fine. Right, but I and, have it, and you didn't do it. Yeah. So it's all what you have is a thing. I, I have, just yeah, have I have the actual soundboard <laughs> audio from that show. Yeah, fair enough. But and but there are people from all over the world there. Yeah, and then like other play. I mean, I I've seen them in. Oh, probably ten cities all across the country. So you've seen more since then. So oh, did you never 50 see times, probably? any music when you were in high school? I mean, I, I o- Do, only like, my shows. I was in, I'm an orchestra. Okay, well, I, yeah. like that's What'd why I play? like the Pumpkins is because uh, their music is so. Uh, I, the musicianship is amazing. I was in marching amazing. band. Yeah, what, I, I, I'm uh, percussionist. Percussionist. Yeah, oh. and I, yeah. That's what I went to college for initially. Oh, fair my enough. First three years. Yeah. Were you in the marching band in college? No, I hate marching band. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. What was that, you, where were you? Uh, University of Wisconsin, Madison. And what, what what instrument? Uh, well, I started out on a clarinet, but I ended up with trumpet, and okay. I played all of them poorly. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I loved them. I loved yeah. playing them, and I and I genuinely. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, p- part of the music problem is that I love uh, marching band music and I love yeah uh, big band. I don't like jazz. See, because, I'm the opposite. Yeah, because yeah. uh, I'm just like, is anyone reading any music? What's happening? <laughs> Nobody's reading any music. And then, yeah. but I did get to see Miles Davis one time. Uh, what? I know it in a in a in a town hall in Provincetown, Massachusetts, and oh he asked God. the he, he said, "Hey, does anybody have any um, floss? Because uh, I'm." <laughs> I I don't have any floss and my trumpet sounding is going to or whatever he said I'm going to sound better if anybody and there was an old lady in the front row of course who had a purse mm-hmm. and if you got a purse why wouldn't you, you have, have floss. floss in it yeah so she pulled out and gave it to him and then I don't think he gave it back to her but he might have because uh, <laughs> it, it would have been a thing I don't know if it would have been an eBay thing but it would have been a thing oh uh, my god that's the so floss cool. of Miles Davis yeah and he was uh, he was excellent like I love trumpet so yeah. trumpet like virtuoso trumpet like mm-hmm. uh, extemporaneous or what the hell is it called? Uh, like ad-lib. when you ad libbing? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, A cadenza. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I enjoyed Miles Davis's version of that. Yeah, but that's because he seemed to know what he was doing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I, yeah, I I, lo- I love classical jazz, the Smashing Pumpkins. And a bunch of other bands too, but yeah. all on that same kind of you like level the... of like super creative, kind of uh, unpredictable. I guess would be would be the way I would right say and it. and full and and full production. Yeah, you, you full, like a yeah. like a lot of layers to the because like you were saying a lot of layers to the music. Yeah, a, a lot of layers are just just like I mean something that's melodically surprising yeah. or like construction. Like I hate. I hate people that just strum an acoustic guitar and are in just a predictable way. Right. Like the, w- one of the things I really love about the Pumpkins, I, I listened to an interview with him or read an interview with him in an audio engineering yeah. um, magazine where he said he's he's <laughs> deliberately um, not repeated any guitar techniques from one album to another. Okay. And it's like I don't think other people think of that. Right, right. Well, there is some pop song because I have been listening to Amazon's top prime, uh, uh-huh. <laughs> top pop, uh, <laughs> in an effort to know who the hell everyone is. And so, um, but there's some song that said, "I wish I could write a a, a, a series of chords that had never been written before, or something." Mm-hmm. That's one of the lyrics in somebody's song. Yeah, I'm. I don't have a lot. Well, that of that doesn't exist, but and that, you can do right, it differently. He can, right, he can give it. He's trying. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, um, yeah. and then you know, Heart and Soul. Have you heard the pop song based on Heart and Soul? You, you, do, do, yeah, do, yeah. What's do, the song? Do, 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 do. That's that. It starts out with Heart and Soul, and then 
there's um the chorus is play that song the song that makes me want to go all night long nope i should never sing nothing nothing. i'm a team singer you guys anyway so um but it's it's a it is also a very popular song at this time Mm. but um so do you mostly listen um like, because you clearly, you're still listening to the Smashing Pumpkins. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So oh, is is it um, is it on CD? I'm seeing them in two weeks. You're seeing them again in two well, weeks? It's Billy Corgan solo on the 9th. Well, I'm seeing I'm seeing on the 9th, and as long as I don't have to go out of town, the uh, 10th through the 12th, I'm going to go to all those nights, too. I'll just, I usually... Because you still I, have a buddy who's in the band, right? But but this is solo, so now what I... W- w- He's doing four nights at Hollywood Forever Cemetery. Oh, okay. And I, so I'm, I bought tickets for the first night. And yeah. then what I'll do is if I'm not going out of town that weekend, yeah. then I'll just buy tickets for the other ones on Craigslist. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because you might get a deal. No, you won't get a deal. You get, you get, it's definitely, <laughs> it's definitely going to be about twice it'll, as much. It'll be uh, an expensive weekend. Yeah. If it happens. But, but I can't not do it. Right. I'm telling you, I felt like last or two years ago, I flew to Austin on a whim just to watch a show because they were performing in a better venue. Oh, inter- that's yeah. awesome. And do you get the merch? Do you? I have too much. Um, so I've started dialing it back. I have, like it has to be something special. I imagine. I what do you have, have? An entire side of my closet that's pumpkin shirts. Just pumpkin t-shirts. Yeah, because they all. I mean, they all like commission cool artists for them, and they yeah. all look so cool. And I have. Oh, last I checked, forty three. I think forty three. Forty three t-shirts. t-shirts and three sweatshirts. All right. Um. I have other a stuff. A nice zip too. hoodie? Or is he just doing a pullover? Uh, no, I, I have two two zip hoodies and one pullover. A crew or a hooded? A uh, hooded. 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 Oh, absolutely hooded. It's just not a checking. crew. No one's doing crew sweatshirts <laughs> anymore. I, I have, Maybe next year. I have a lot of I even have the um, the original album art that he took for Pisces Iscariot. Okay. He auctioned it. And uh, he he was like, I just you found have the original art that he yeah, took. For, yeah, it's for the inside cover. Yeah. Um. He he did he did it all with Polaroids. Yeah. And a few years ago, he was like, Hey, I just found these original photos. I don't need them. I guess I'm going to auction them if people want them. And I just put an absurd number in there, thinking I'm not going to win. Yeah. And like an hour later, it's like you won. I was like, What? Well, I'm not going to tell my wife how much this was. Oh my god. And- <laughs> <laughs> I had Tom Frank on this very show, and uh, he was talking about how yeah. he sold a script, and he's a, he likes some um, action figures, mm-hmm. and he bought a Gundam prototype action figure from Japan that was never made into a regular action. It was never oh, mass it's a produced. Prototype? Yeah, so it was a three foot tall villain, so, mm-hmm. and uh, of the Gundam, I think, and mm-hmm. um, was fifteen grand. Ooh. And he keeps it in a um, box, like a lock box. And I was like, well, that's the lame part, is that yeah. <laughs> if you're going to if you're gonna have it, put it in a, a an earthquake-proof box in your living room so you yeah, can yeah. stare at you it gotta, yeah. and then open it and play with it. And uh, But he he had, he told his wife just because um, she said, you can, you know, get, yeah. get one. He sold a script. Yeah. It was he probably sold it for a hundred grand or something like yeah. that, and she was like, "Well, get yourself something pretty, honey." Yeah, and uh, and he found yeah. that, and then because different, like, is to play with it is to at, at least you wear the shirts, you know. It's right. not a. Um, I wear most of them. There, there, there are actually two that I've never worn. Right, in an effort to just keep them nice. Yeah, I, yeah. It's Which two, two? Two that I got the night of the farewell show. Okay. This is going to sound psychopathic. Okay, I just did a sneaker episode. Impossible. There go we ahead. go. I, I got three. I got three shirts that night. Okay, one was for the f- free box set that they just put out. Okay, and, and it's cool. It's like worn to death. Okay, right. There's another one that just says the end, mm-hmm. and it's the original, the first photo of the band together in front of like a yield sign, but it says end. Right, and it's from '88. It, it looks so funny, and yeah. it, but it, but then it it looks like a um, you know, and then it says the Smashing Pumpkins '88 to 2000 at the bottom. Okay, cool. Still in the bag from that night. And then another nice. one from the Machina album that's that uh, just has like super cool artwork from that night that I I have not worn. Uh, but what I did do, yes, this is what sounds psychopathic. <laughs> I bought. See, okay, I was younger, um, right? I bought copies of those shirts later and i've worn those oh fairness you bought reproductions <laughs> yeah so you have the original, they were official i bought the them from the website well and for some reason that's different okay. from buying it from the show that is somehow different uh yeah. but i say 
do whatever you need to do. It's, uh, I had Retta, who was a friend of mine who's a yeah. comic, and she's on a she was regular on a sitcom, mm-hmm. and she's she acts all the time, so she has a very nice income, mm-hmm. and uh, she likes purses. Mm-hmm. And then there's an episode of The Dork Forest where she tells me about purses, and at one point I said, "What's the most you ever spent on a purse?" And her eyes just got real big, and she's like silently glaring at me going what are you doing to me here <laughs> and uh and she bought a purse for fifteen thousand dollars and, uh, and it was used no yeah and uh uh, 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 uh hermes Her- Hermes. Yeah. i don't know what i thought called. it was Hermes. i thought it was french but i think it it, i think it's greek or latin well th- he it's, was a greek he was a greek, greek god but um but it's with a z so it's yeah. it's just it's, I, it's 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 a famous I think it's hermes. company it's actually hermes. hermes yeah it's hermes but i think it's with a z oh but i don't know anything about purses it was a year and a half ago yeah so uh it's all a sieve i but so <laughs> what are the, <laughs> so let's go with uh pick a pick a favorite song that didn't make the list that well, you sent me. let's see. I got to look at the list again. Yeah, well, yeah. Starla would be. I mean, Starla and Mayonnaise are on the list, and yeah. those those are, are two of your faves. Two, yeah, those are two of the top five. Um, uh, Starla. Let yeah. me tell you, I saw it in 2007. They did the, these residencies when they first reformed, where they did um, 11 shows in Asheville, North Carolina, and okay. nine at um, the Fillmore in in San Francisco, and it okay. was like, I mean. O- over those 20 nights they probably accumulated another like two hours of new music wow and i was up front because i got there at 7 a.m sure so i'm up against the rail and and uh starla has this like five minute guitar <laughs> solo that's just like mind-blowing and it was about a foot and a half from my face wow and yeah so that that was absolutely incredible and but it's it's a written in the like it that it's in the song still it's that in the, yeah it's in the song he plays it a little differently live sure. though there there's there's a part in the live version yeah where he's he's playing a bass line with his thumb mm-hmm. and he's hammering a melody with his other left hand fingers yep meanwhile his right hand is behind the nut on the guitar, which is like up by the tuners. Okay, bending each string independently to just to, bend, to bend the notes. Yeah, separately. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It, so that's it, some it's amazing, such a crazy sound. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and he's all he also plays it like with his eyes closed usually. Okay. It's crazy. Well, <laughs> it's it's not like he's reading music. He might as well, right? Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, the thing is, is whenever I see a guitar player uh, just sort of noodling. You know, mm-hmm. like there, there's something about guitar players that who love that'll just. It's why they play at parties, so yeah. they don't have any social skills, and they're just like, "Well, I'm just going to go practice," mm-hmm. and then people gather around them. Yeah, <laughs> and, until they start playing Wonderwall. And, <laughs> right <laughs> now, what is that? What is Wonderwall? Oh, that's an Oasis song. You don't oh, know Wonderwall? I'm unfamiliar with the band. Oasis. Probably teaching about a minute and a half. Is it? Did it? Yeah. Um, so it, a friend of mine uh, said uh, that. Some songs sound like they came with the guitar. Yes, and, that's Wonderwall. Uh, okay, fair enough. Yeah, that's definitely Wonderwall. Okay. See, I have to name. Okay, I have to name one song that's not on the list. That okay. Uh, well, go through the songs on the list. Though. Oh, jeez. Okay, we uh, because I, I get uh, okay because I wanted to give you an intro course. Yes. So I gave you tonight, tonight, nineteen seventy nine, mayonnaise, uh, stand inside your love, the storytellers edition, um, for Martha, which is the title track. Um, Ode to his mother. Okay. Um, Bullet with butterfly wings, disarm. Those are two other huge hits. And Starla. Okay. Um, and then we had a bunch of others. Uh, there's there's about fifty more here. Right. Some of these, I mean, a lot of my favorite songs didn't make the list because I was like, well, I don't, I, they wouldn't. They're even, too uh, weird. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're they're like second, third level. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's uh, you, you just want to introduce it's it's like whenever uh, I tell people to read the Lord of the Rings I'm like skip the poems skip the poems the first <laughs> really? time and then just get the story and then reread and then you'll love the poems. See I've I've never read Lord of the Rings. Uh skip the poems just get really? the story it'll be super great and uh and someone uh is listening to this going skip the oh, poems right, 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 what right. are you nuts? I was like yeah. not forever. Yeah. Just the first time. Well, I yeah, I just finished reading a book where 300 pages of it made me want to kill myself. So I know what you mean. Was uh, I'll tell you, the last Harry Potter book uh-huh. uh, had 200 pages of camping. So what? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
what was the book that had 300 pages that wanted to kill yourself? How much of it was it setting up the tent? <laughs> uh, there was at least 11 pages five different times. Who forgot the poles? <laughs> oh, no, they magically set up the, pen, the tent, so it's like thwap and thwap uh, with Latin. And uh, <laughs> But you're like, you know, this could have been... I don't know, three scenes. It didn't have yeah. to be 200 pages of them running and hiding. Anyway, yeah. no, she had no editor at those, at those last days. Uh, oh. No one to say, how about a line veto? Can I just at least just please? <laughs> and uh, so, I mean, the, if you look at how big the last book is, it's over 700 pages. Which one is it? Where am it's, I looking? Oh, at the end there. Yeah. Yeah. That's still, that's still a lot of sorcery in here. It's a lot of sorcery. It's got the good British art, too, so it's kind of nice. It's all sparkly. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I've never read a Harry Potter anything. I've never seen a Harry Potter anything. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So, what? Uh, yeah, you're busy catching up on your pumpkins. Music. Yeah, music. No, I read a lot. I read a lot, but for some reason, I don't read any fantasy stuff. Do you read nonfiction? Is that what you read? I read nonfiction and fiction. My friend got me the book. Uh, no, my brother got it, actually. Name of the Wind, Patrick Rothfuss. Yeah, and he's from Wisconsin. I'm going to read that. Are you? It's, it's in my queue. Okay. My queue is... <laughs> Right. Why? Why? Yeah. Uh, I would. I would recommend Ready Player One over uh, Name of the Wind. Who, who is uh, Ernie Klein? Ernie Klein. Ernie Klein. Ernest, that before I go. Ernest Klein. Because uh, first of all, it's about three hundred pages, and Name mm-hmm. of the Wind is about seven hundred pages. Yeah. And Name of the Wind is it's great. I mean, it's it's essentially. I read the first one. I couldn't get into the second one as much and he hasn't written the third one Mm -hmm. and he keeps going on this joko cruise that i'm on and i keep wanting to go why uh why are you cruising why aren't you writing why aren't Mm -hmm. you wrapping up uh that Mm -hmm. third book and he wrote a prequel to it and you're Mm -hmm. like no 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 finish 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 the trilogy and then do whatever the hell you want to do um (laughs) There's a great, uh, uh, there's, I just, I, I read the first one and I don't know why I haven't been able to do the next one. It's N as in Nancy, K as in Kelly, Mm -hmm. Jemison, J-E-M-I-S-E-N, I I believe. Okay. It might be I-N. And, uh, she has written, uh, several series. They're all done. And she won <laughs> Hugo's years in a row because they keep. I think she. Oh, uh, pub, I think she. Pre- she writes them, and then she publishes them, like a oh, book. L- l- like a person should do. Well, yeah. Like yeah, why? Yeah. Do, why do we have to suffer through your through your Game of Thrones bullshit? Yeah. And yeah, so B- Billy Corgan's actually done that a couple of times. It's it's fucking annoying. Where he where he he's, he's put out a free box set, right? Yeah. It, it, and it was like fifty songs or something like that. He put out the first like fifteen songs for free, mm-hmm. and if you wanted, like you could buy, you could buy deluxe versions, which of course I did, right? Um, of course, in EP form, like you know, five tracks each. Okay, and they were they they were all super cool packaging and like crazy stuff in it, um, but uh, um, and then like to make it all worthwhile, yeah. And then yeah. after like fifteen tracks, he's like. All right, our uh, our next uh, album is part of that box set too. <laughs> then, so, it was like, oh, you're just not doing this box set anymore, right? Right. Yeah, <laughs> you're just done with that. Yeah, and you're just gonna keep. So, what did you read that was the 300 page? Uh, okay. It sounds douchey if I say what it, what it was, but it's safe space, man. It's uh, okay. I, I, I this read I'm reading Potter an Al books. Franken book now, so okay. so I'm not this. It, 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 <laughs> this isn't. It's not like this is just what I do. But no, no. Like, my, my, yes. Oh, okay. So so my friend Al, his favorite think creative thing ever is the book Ulysses. Okay. And Al's James read Joyce. every book that exists, pretty much. Okay. And uh, so I said, all right, I I want I want to read it then. Yes. And um and Oh my god, you read Ulysses? Yes. I read <laughs> I read Ulysses and I, he, I, he I had to he had to prep me for it. I had to, I had to reread Portrait of the Artist first. Yeah. And I had to read Madame Bovary and there was there were two others he said I should read to mentally well, prepare he gave myself. Well, you a syllabus. Yes. And, it, and I, I didn't want a syllabus. No. So I stopped after Madame Bovary even though I really liked it. Yeah. And Ulysses uh starts great. And mm-hmm. then, and then you don't know what the fuck's happening for right. about three hundred pages, right? And then all of a sudden, there's a play in the middle of it, and the play is great. And from the play, 
um, up until Molly Bloom's soliloquy right. is awesome. Right. And then Molly Bloom's soliloquy is the greatest thing I have ever read. Okay. And it made it all worth it. it okay. It wouldn't have held... Like, without the soliloquy, I would have said... I would have rather... I don't know. I mean... Like box Mike Tyson, like they, so many other things I would rather do. But then when I read the soliloquy, right. I, I mean, you finish it and you're just like, I mean, you you feel like you're in shock. It's so right. good. I've never finished it. Oh. Ulysses, yeah. yeah, no, I've never finished it. I read Portrait of an Artist as a Young Man. Mm-hmm. Um, two books I started that are really good that mm-hmm. I've never finished are Don Quixote mm-hmm. and Moby Dick. Yeah, and um, Moby Dick is actually pretty funny. Like I read the mm-hmm. first hundred pages, and then for some reason, I weeded off. Yeah, <laughs> I probably read a Jack Reacher novel. God knows <laughs> what I was doing. And um, and the and Don Quixote, I think I read the first hundred and eighty pages, and then um, the kid I was babysitting for is probably fifteen years ago finished it before me, and I was like, oh, she no, doesn't t- need me to finish. It. <laughs> and uh, that's cause a I, thick ass book. It's yeah, yeah, and it's beautiful. It's funny, mm-hmm. and but it's it's you know it's. 1680 funny yeah so 1680 funny is dense and well written yeah and uh yeah and even 19 1902 funny which is i forget when moby dick was written it was early 1900s Mm -hmm. or late 1800s and um it's much better written funny Mm -hmm. than hamlet 2 the movie yeah so yeah well that's what people say that uh ulysses is hilarious i'm like at times at times (laughs) and then people like no 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 like every sentence is funny i'm like Nope. I mean, not, if you have to research it, <laughs> if you have to research it to know what yeah. the sentence means, <laughs> not that funny. Not as funny, not that as, funny. You, not as funny as you think. Yeah. Uh, I don't read much of Chris Rock special. Yeah. Oh, it's, uh, I, I read Balzac in, mm-hmm. uh, uh, in college. Uh, Rabelais and uh, I read Rabelais, not Balzac. I think we, I can't remember if we read Balzac, but uh, I remember saying the word Balzac and thinking it was funny. <laughs> uh, so we read Rabelais, Gargantuan, Pantagruel, and it was. Uh, funny, but I had just started doing stand up and I was like, these are all dick jokes. These are all dick jokes. <laughs> dick jokes are dumb. And I was such a snob about dick jokes and fart jokes and poop jokes <laughs> that I'm reading Rabelais and I'm like, yeah. mm, guy's a hack. Wow. And, uh, that's hilarious. My you started stand up in college? Yeah, I was 19. Oh my yeah. God, that's awesome. Sure, sure. I've, uh, I've, I get in on the ground floor of things that don't make money. Where'd you get the courage? Uh, where That's didn't cool. I get the courage? Uh, okay. <laughs> it was, no, I heckled Sam Kinison and, uh, and they shut me up by <gasps> manager came over oh, and he said, Hey, open mic is on Sunday. Shut the fuck up. And, uh, and I was like, no, I'll be back. And then uh, three weeks later, <laughs> heckled Sam Kinison. guess, guess how successful that was. It was oh, not. Oh my God. And, uh, it wasn't, it actually, he, he was, uh, he was so coked up. That yeah. uh, and he was so not happy about doing a show for uh, ninety people in a basement in Madison, Wisconsin. Yeah, th- uh, for his brother for free. Uh, <laughs> that he was phoning it in anyway. I probably infuriated him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll do it. That'll do it. I I know. Whenever uh, my brother asked me to do a show, and it, there's no pay, I'm like, what am I doing? Yeah, I would. Why? Do it. And. Uh, yeah, so. I, my mom is actually she she works at a middle school. She's mm-hmm. like the teachers there love your comedy and they would love if you would do a show for it sometime. And I just go, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's I, we were in Ireland uh, in early um, August, in late July, early August, and we stayed with my friend Maureen Fitzpatrick, mm-hmm. who is from Iowa, who married a guy and uh, from Poland, and they moved to Ireland, and then they got divorced, and she stayed in Ireland, and her, then her mom moved to Ireland to retire, Marlene Fitzpatrick. Mm-hmm. So uh, her mom has a little two-bedroom, one-bath cottage thing, right, in this tiny town in Cork, mm-hmm. uh, Castle Bear Town Haven. Castle Town Bear that Haven? That doesn't sound right. Castle Town Bear Haven. <laughs> None of it sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like the greatest name ever in a, in a leprechaun movie. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> but uh, so it was so gorgeous and so wonderful. So Maureen, I, I said, hey, we're going to come visit you when we're in Ireland. And so we drive down to, to, uh, to the Cork Peninsula and to Castle Town Bear Haven. And <laughs> A week before, Maureen goes, hey, my, and I'm, we're staying with her mom because she has an extra room for two nights. And, and, uh, and Maureen goes, hey, my mom wants to know if you'll do a show in the living room for her friends and my friends. And I paused. I was goes, of course, I would love to do a How show. How long ago was this? This is a month ago, two months ago. No way. Yeah. 
I thought you were going to say when you were 20. No. You still would do that? Well, it's how am I going to turn down an old lady who's putting me up? And so I, there were 40 people in that in, in her. I mean, it was actually oh, okay, a show. Okay, there's 40 people. You're good then. It was, yeah, it yeah. wasn't like, I because mean, if it would have, I was like, I could just sit there and tell you stories and the, yeah. I'll turn my jokes into stories, which they're half already stories. Yeah. But, and I forgot that Maureen Fitzpatrick, who busked, who's my friend, mm-hmm. she was a busker all around Europe for like a decade. Mm hmm. Every everything, every gathering of humanity that happens around Maureen Fitzpatrick is a show. Right. She plays the dulcimer and the accordion, and her friends all play different Mm hoo-hahs. And so it is like, it's like Whoville. Yeah. You show up and everybody's got a noisemaker, and it's a show anyway. So right. it's not like I had to go up cold. Right, it was, right, right. <laughs> it's was... like Once. Have you seen that movie Once when they're around the dinner table and oh. it just turns into a fucking show? <laughs> no. I Oh, I wanted to see that. You've though. Never seen it seen great? It? Oh, it's great. Oh, good. It's, uh, so, it's one of my favorite movies. Uh, yeah, I uh, have derailed you as per usual oh, no. here on the door That's what's fun. Yeah, yeah. So, Do you mean just run down some yeah, songs here? Do it. So the list I gave you is tonight's. Oh, I already went through you those. You did Starla. And then I'll tell you some of the others that were in the running. Yeah. Uh, it's not necessarily my favorite. Well, some of these are some of my favorite songs. Yeah, but, pick, pick a favorite. Right, let's just uh, do, do 99 Floors I love. It's not on an album. It isn't. No. It, this was uh, one of the songs from the residency shows. Uh, there was only um, uh, it, it's on the documentary uh, DVD from the residency called "If All Goes Wrong." Okay, um, and it's just a beautiful song. He, they also performed on tour for two or three years. It's it's just acoustic guitar and harmonica, um, and then and then there's actually the the rest of the band comes in as well okay. but uh yeah it, it's all it's acoustic and harmonica it's a beautiful song and there's lyrics or yeah, is oh, it yeah, instrumental? yeah okay yeah, yeah, yeah. And, so, and is it about going up 99 floors and finding a monster what is it it is oh is it it is no 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 no, no. <laughs> i was like yes it, 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 it it's about having um kind of this sensory overload but still complete boredom like okay like you're like you're in a building with 99 floors but there's nowhere to go Ah, I believe yeah. that's the definition of ennui, Billy. Uh, <laughs> you might be, uh, you, you might have uh, uh, quality problems. That's <laughs> what that sounds like. Um, uh, With Every Light's a great song. That's another uh, song about his mother. With Every Light? Yep, With that's, Every Light. That's that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful line. I like the the name of that. Um, Poor Selena is great musically. Yeah. I mean, lyrically it is too. Right. Um, but... Uh, um that's that's off the melancholy album okay it's melancholy by the way song. is spelled m-e-l-l-o-n yeah. and then Kali like the dog yeah he all of his titles are all fucking weird they're all word plays no not they're just they're just nothing they're either a word play or they just don't make sense like someone in an interview asked him like why do you uh they're like your song titles never have anything to do with the song they're like how do you do that and he's right. he's like all right Say you're uh say I'm writing a song about um this lamp. Right. Right? The lamp gives off a red light. Yeah. The red light makes me think of a bullfighter. So I named the song Cow. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. So it's word association more than anything. Yeah. But Pisces yeah. Iscariot, that is clearly wordplay. Yeah. Melancholy, that's clearly wordplay. Yeah. So I mean the guy's I mean he's, he just he likes words, obviously. Yeah. And he yeah. likes language and, and yeah. likes to play with it. Yeah. And then also does word association. Yeah. He even does he even wrote a song in John Locke's voice. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, because he was reading John Locke. <laughs> right. And he he had just bought a um a dulcimer okay. and the band said you can't write a song with this. You cannot? Yeah. So he was like, uh, fuck you. I'm going to write a song with this. Right. Why don't you just throw down the gauntlet to the bossy Magoo? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. not going to work. <laughs> yeah. And he said he was reading John Locke and he just started writing in that, uh, in in, that style. In that style? Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. has he got one about Thomas Hobbes? He does not. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Someday. Tweet at him. Tweet at him. Um, <laughs> Is he on Twitter? Uh, yeah. Oh, good. He is. Um, uh, this time. Is a great song. Is it? That's which a, yeah. album is that one on? That's on Machina, which is spelled like Machina. Yeah. Um, uh, that's a great one. Um, pug, like the dog. Great song. Is it about it's a off pug? the door? It's not. Interesting. It's not. I know. Curveball. Curveball. <laughs> yeah. Pug lovers everywhere. Devastating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why but, is it called Pug? Do you think? I have no What's idea. It about? What are some of the lyrics of I, Pug? Um. How does that go? <laughs> I, 
I, I, I think it's kind of about it's it's a longing feeling. That's on the Adore album where everything's about some sort of parting. And, oh, okay. Or uh, mourning. Um, oh, interesting. So Pug is on that. Maybe he lost his dog. Stop. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Maybe, yeah, maybe he had a... It's, it's, he, lost, he lost his dog. Maybe he lost his dog. He does have a song about his cat. Oh, does he? Yeah. Which one's that? It's called Lily, My One and Only. <laughs> <clears throat> it's named after his cat. But then okay. It, 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 but then if you... Uh, if you about watching the, his cat through the window. Yeah. But then it's, it also sounds like it's just a pervert. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> he's, he's doing a little voyeurism. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, but he's watching his cat. Yeah. It's, we have a blow-up cat because it's Halloween. I saw that. And yeah. it, it's on a timer. So at dusk, mm-hmm. it inflates and moves. And there's so many feral cats in our neighborhood <laughs> that they stop. What I mean, literally, there's usually four or five cats. When you walk out our front door, you will notice at least three cats. Oh, I saw a cat when I came out. I thought it was your cat. No, no, you will. We don't have a cat. <laughs> uh, we have a hundred cats, and yeah. um, and we have an iguana, which hope, which luckily uh, he is uh, not afraid of cats. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, but the I have a great picture or video of four cats just staring at the giant the first night he put it up and uh it's, it was hilarious because it's like our cat overlord has finally shown up that is hilarious i also salute you for having that because you you don't have kids right nope and you're, you're going all in on halloween we always go all in on halloween uh andy loves to decorate the house uh-huh. and um nobody else does it like he'll put up a flag for flag day like he'll do oh, wow yeah he, he bought pink flamingos for easter i was like what's happening yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's. Uh, I know you're not gonna out white yeah. trash me, but this is craziness. I've never I've never decorated anything. Uh, he loves. Uh, yeah. Here's what I like: is I like we're going to buy pumpkins later today. Uh-huh. I uh, am in charge of cleaning pumpkins and baking seeds. He is in yeah. charge of designing uh, fancy pumpkins. He is. He has an art yeah. degree. He's right. an artist, so right. uh, he cares more than I do. I yeah. and we never carved pumpkins when I was a kid, mm-hmm. so I can do the jack o' lantern triangle thing, and that's all <laughs> that's, I can do. Yeah, <laughs> or yeah. I can make a look a surprised pumpkin where uh, it's a circle. A, yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a circle and it just like slits. Its eyes are closed. Sli- its mouths like, are. <laughs> what's happening and, uh, well we're gonna have some pumpkin seeds that's what's happening anyway so yeah. um but tiberius likes to eat the innards of pumpkins tiberius so is the is, name of a pumpkin song he's is it yeah <laughs> tiberius a, is the name it's of off our, their last album the last album so monuments uh, to an elegy tiberius is the iguana um but uh tiberius is monuments to an elegy is their last song uh, last an album, album off the last song uh, a song off the last album what was the last album called monuments to an elegy that's right okay yeah. so and how many how many songs does he have on an album usually um, it varies are uh, they like 45 minute albums or are no they he, he maxes out how much a cd can fit Okay. Yeah. So it can... Although Monuments to an Elegy was the first one that's not. I think that one's only a forty minute album. That was it, the the concept behind that album was like everyone's waiting for this uh, like this pumpkins who makes just nothing but like hits like like radio rock songs and he's right. like that's never been who we were. We have one of those songs per album, maybe two. Right. He's like we we do seven minute songs that are involved and you know orchestrated right. in some way. And so uh, Monuments to an Elegy is like, fine, here's a bunch of radio sounding rock songs. Okay. Yeah. So, and, they, so these are monuments to the, that elegy. Okay. Yeah. So they're three and a half minute songs. Yeah. That would play good on radio if radio still existed. Yeah. And, 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 and what's crazy. So uh, their drummer had just left the band. Yeah. And he, they were kind of joking, him and the other guitarist, Jeff, like, what if we got Tommy Lee to play drums on this song? And so they call them, and and then Tommy Lee's like, "Yeah, can I play the whole album?" Like they sent him the stuff, so right. he plays on it. But it, which is cool at first, but then like the difference, like Jimmy Chamberlain was a jazz drummer. He was a right. professional jazz drummer before he joined the band. He's okay. like, he's just he's. And phenomenal. you're a drummer, so you can uh, yeah. hear the difference. Yeah, that 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 was the other thing that drew me to the band is like I only like bands that have great drummers. Okay, and he's like, does Genesis have a great drummer? I don't know okay. anything about Vance, okay. but I know he's a drummer. Phil Collins is yeah. A, yeah, a okay, decent, so he's decent. a decent drummer? He's a Who's decent. the best drummer ever? Is there I mean, a best I mean, rock drummer ever? Best To me, best rock drummer is Jimmy Chamberlain. Right. D- uh, Danny Carey. Who's uh, in what? That's Tool. Okay. Uh, he's he's up there. Um, 
Carter Beauford from Dave Matthews Band is a ridiculous funk drummer. Awesome. Um, That's neat. Yeah. And then in the 70s, I know everyone talks about um, uh, like Ginger Baker. He, he, he is really good. What was um, he in? Uh, Cream. Okay. Um, uh, what was his name? Uh, uh, from the Jimmy Chamberlain experience. Um, uh, fuck, what's his name? Seriously, I think Mitch we, Mitchell. We Mitch could Mitchell's do another good. hour on. I I love at like minute fifty nine. Yeah, saying, yeah, yeah. Finding like a whole other dorkdom. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. uh, other oh, drummers. Um, and Mozart's stuff. my other one too. I went on. A, I went on a Mozart vacation last year through <laughs> Vienna. Did you bring Vienna your wife? Salzburg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is she going on November 9th? Uh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that'll be great. Yeah. So she likes the Smashing Pumpkins. She's a as well. fan, but not of the crazy loud stuff. So this concert's going to be perfect. It's all acoustic and piano. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I have this to say, Ryan Connor. It's been yeah. an hour. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's, uh, and granted, we weeded off for about 10 minutes, uh-huh. but I would say a good 50 minutes of Smashing Pumpkin talk here. It's been a good amount. Yeah, it's nice. So do you feel Ryan, like you know some, something about him now? I do. I do. Yeah. I, it's, I kind of want to uh, do a YouTube kind of search it, yeah. and, and haven't felt that since the Sky episode. I feel like a lot of my, my so. answers have been stilted, so I hope I didn't just tease... I guess I because I start and then I get, I go somewhere else. It's true, and I tend to weed off. But people who like Smashing Pumpkins that are listening to this episode will be like, "That was that was good." I like to hear because people like a, a validation, and then people who don't yeah. know anything about them, they got a little bit of an introduction, and then people who don't go. like the Smashing Pumpkins at all are like. Well, I'm glad he likes it, which is the yeah. entire purpose yeah. of the Dork Forest. Those three things. <laughs> Can I so, yeah. one one final endorsement? Yeah. Sure. If if you're a fan of theirs, best best city to see them in is Chicago because that's it's where they're where, from. It's right? where they're from. The crowds are the best. I've seen them in Chicago three times. Like I said, I've seen probably fifty times total right. all over the country. Chicago by far the best. New York the worst. New York the worst. All yeah. right. So Ryan Connor comedy.com mm-hmm. and at RC comedy for Twitter mm-hmm. and uh, thank you so much for doing the show oh, it's a pleasure thank you so much for having me all right and you know the rules out there Rangers take care of each other my hat my hat my hat they're dancing around my hat <laughs> my hat my hat my hat well what do you think of that if it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance it's most likely a Mexican hat dance so take off your hat and let's dance yay Oh my god. Thank we you. why don't we just call that as the end of the show?